Hi, it's Chester Tudworth from Blue Pecan Computer Training. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at some of the uh, great new tools in Excel 2013 uh, regarding creating charts. Uh, in particular, we're going to look at something called recommended charts. Now, this basically looks at the data you present in Excel and works out what would be the best type of chart uh, for that data. So, for example, we'll look at creating charts for the secondary axis. We have two sets of data that won't fit on uh, one axis, uh, looking at scatter charts, how to create those, and also pivot charts. We have uh, loads of data with categories within it. Um, now, uh, if you want to download the file that uh, I'm using in this video, uh, then please visit the link in the description here on YouTube. Uh, you can also um, see some step-by-step -step instructions um, on that link. It uh, takes you basically to um, the page dedicated to this tutorial on our site bluepecantraining.com so we'll start off straight away with uh, looking at creating a basic chart so i've got some basic data here i've got some staff and i've got some sales figures all i need to do is just click into the data go up to the insert tab my ribbon and i've got my recommended charts button up here so i click on it you can see straight away it kind of works out what would be the best type of chart uh, for my data, I've either got a column chart, a bar chart, or a pie chart. I'm going to go for a pie chart on this instance. Uh, just click on OK, and I've got my chart straight off. Now you'll notice you've got some little buttons up here. These help you kind of format uh, the layout and the look of your chart. If I click on this plus sign, just move this over here a little bit. If I click on this plus sign, I can see I can include or exclude chart elements. For example, data labels, I might want to include those. So I'll hover over data labels there and I've got a little arrow. It gives me a little pull out and I might, for example, want to show data callouts. Choose that option. Um, chart styles, the little paintbrush here. Uh, very simply, this kind of uh, improves the uh, look and feel of your chart. So I might, for example, want to go for uh, this one with the dark background. I can also change the colour scheme applied to my chart by just clicking on this colour tab. And I could very simply just say go for this kind of blue theme here. Now this uh, funnel button, uh, what that does is um, allow you to exclude or exclude certain data in your chart. For example, if you had several series, you could uh, choose which series to exclude or include. And uh, we can't really do that here because we only have one series. And we've also got categories. So for example, um, I might want to uh, exclude uh, certain salespeople from my chart. You can see as I hover over their names, it highlights the relevant data on my chart, makes it easier to kind of work out uh, what you're changing. I can click on, uh, say, untick Betty. Um, now you won't be able to see this on your screen, but I've got a little apply button uh, right down here. I click on apply, and Betty would then be excluded uh, from my chart. So you can see, very nice and easy uh, way to uh, create something simple like that. Now I'm going to go into my next sheet here. I just want to look at how uh, the filtering option might be really useful for you. Uh, what we've got here is we've got some sales data for Bob and Bill, uh, and a little comparison down here in the fourth row. We've also got quarters subtotals in your data. Now you won't want those quarter subtotals to show up on your chart. It'll look pretty messy. Let's use recommended chart to see uh, what that comes up with. So I'll just click somewhere in my data. Go up to insert again. Go to recommended charts. Um, now you can see what it's done. It's actually created a nice little combo chart uh, with percentage data as a line graph. But you can see the uh, main area of my chart here, shown by columns, uh, shows these spikes here, which reflect the quarter subtotals. Now I'm going to not want those in my chart, so let's see what we can do. Well, I click on OK. Here's my chart. And I'm going to use my filter button just to exclude the um, the, uh, the uh, quarters from uh, the data. Now all I need to do is just scroll down here, untick quarter one, untick quarter two, untick quarter three, uh, and there's quarter four down here, it's just below your screen. And you've also got an apply button at the bottom, uh, which I need to click on. And you can see then that it excludes that data uh, from my chart. So there's a use for, uh, another use for uh, the uh, filter option there. Okay, let's go on to a secondary axis chart. So this is a little bit similar to what we were just looking at, but we've got Bob and Bill, um, their sales data. We've also got 
uh, percentage comparison. So Bob made uh, 134 percent of Bill's uh, sales in January, 105 percent of his sales in um, in February. So Bob's doing pretty well in January and February. Let's just create a chart to show that. And uh, I'm going to use my recommended chart option again. And we saw this earlier on, but you can see that it's quite nicely put this percentage data as a line graph on a secondary axis using a combo chart. It's done that kind of automatically for me. Now, the great thing about this is that you can actually uh, change around how uh, the data on the secondary axis is shown. I might, for example, want to show that uh, as an error graph, or I might want to put the uh, the main data here, the main sales data on the secondary axis, um, maybe this data on the primary axis. Let's look at how we would do that. Well, what I would do is I'd go to all charts here, and you'll see uh, down here there's an option for combo chart. So I click on that, and that then gives me the option to play around with what resides on the secondary axis. So Bob and Bill uh, currently uh, is giving me the option line graph. I might change that to area graph. Let's choose that and then just pop it on the secondary axis. And there you can see it's changed the way it's shown that data. Now I could easily put these two series of data on the secondary axis as I said before and put this on the primary axis. I'm not going to but just to show you that there is that option. So creating charts of secondary axis, you could always do that in Excel but a whole lot easier now uh, using uh, the recommended charts option and these uh, uh, these tools down here. So let's go on and look at a scatter graph. A scatter graph is where you're looking at the relationship between two sets of data. So I'm looking at ice cream sales here and I want to look at the correlation between the highest temperature uh, on that day uh, versus the sales to see if it gets warmer. If it gets warmer you sell more ice cream. So let's see how recommended charts copes with this. So I'm going to go to insert recommended charts. Now it doesn't pull that up straight away, um, but if I look here, second option, it has in fact worked out that this would be best shown on a scatter graph. So I'm going to choose that option, click on OK. Now one thing that I might want to do um, with this chart is um, kind of change the axis here. Um, it might be worthwhile if I started my temperatures down at the bottom here at 15 rather than zero. So I've got a lot of empty space here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on whatever I want to um, uh, edit. And you'll notice you get a task pane that comes up on the right of your chart. And this task pane will show you all the options that you will need for changing, uh, formatting, uh, whatever you've double clicked on. So in this instance, what I need to do is change the minimum value there to 15 um, and uh, you can see there's a lot more options there uh, that I can use them if I want to um, click out that maybe to that and you can see straight away it's changed uh, the value shown on the horizontal axis at the bottom there I might also want to show a trend line so I'll just close that down uh, to add a trend line I'd click on my chart elements button the little plus button and there we are, I have my option for a trend line. Click on that and I can show uh, where the main trend in the data is there. Right, lastly, uh, we're going to look at how to deal with data that will be best shown on a pivot table, so a pivot chart rather. So here I've got a thousand uh, rows of data. Um, it shows, each record shows uh, details of a sale. So I've got the date of the sale, the branch, the product group, the customer type, and the revenue. Now what um, I'm going to need to do here, I can't really show each record as a category or series within my chart that would just look a mess. So what I'm going to need to do is summarise the data, say by branch or product group, uh, customer type and give subtotals of revenue for each of those groups. So let's see if recommended charts can do that for us. So um, I'm going to go up to insert, I'm going to go to recommended charts. Now first off it does offer me uh, a version of the chart that shows uh, each record and you can see that's a total mess. But if I go down to some of these more useful charts you can see here they've got a sum of revenue by product group. So it's worked out different uh, product groups in my data, added up the data and shown it in the chart that's quite useful. Uh, sum of revenue by branch, another way of showing the data. Uh, sum of uh, average of revenue by branch, uh, slightly different calculation there. Average of revenue by product group. 
So I can keep going down. I've got one by customer type, uh, account of revenue by customer type on that one. Uh, so you can see that all of these are quite useful in analysis of my data. So I'm just going to go for that first one, sum of revenue by product group. Uh, I click on OK. Now, because it's uh, a pivot chart, it's actually placed it on a separate um, uh, sheet. Uh, it's called sheet 12 in this example. Um, you can see the data that it's uh, well, the analysis of the subtotal is created. I've also got some other tools up here, over here. Now, if you're used to using pivot charts and pivot tables, you know about all these tools. If not, um, you're going to need to learn about that in a little bit more detail. But otherwise, you can just leave it as it is uh, to show you some useful uh, uh, analysis and chart uh, for your data. OK, so that was a, just a quick overview of some of the new features uh, for charts in Excel 2013. Um, there's also uh, in on our channel a, a video covering the quick analysis tool, which also offers you some of these options. Uh, but just as a reminder, please visit the link in the uh, description for this video because it will give you um, a page with step-by-step -step instructions plus the file that you'll need to download to practice these skills okay thanks very much for listening hopefully that was useful